Russian-backed separatist forces in Donbass have begun confiscating businesses which are registered in government-controlled territory. This is a reaction to the recent railway line blockade staged by groups of former Ukrainian servicemen and other activists. The protesters said they want to stop the shipment of coal from occupied territories, arguing that the trade funds the enemy. The Ukrainian government opposes the blockade, and President Poroshenko warned that hundreds of thousands of people could be left without power in western parts of the country. Grigory Tuka, the deputy minister for the temporarily occupied territories in IDPs maintains that the standoff will lead to further destruction of what remains of Ukrainian infrastructure in the region. He claims that the militants who threaten to take over more Ukrainian registered businesses are unable to effectively manage their enterprises. He says that the businesses may end up being looted and what is left will eventually be sent to Russia. These companies have no future if they are nationalized, or more accurately, raided. They have no future. It was not hard to foresee that the managers of the mines in the Luhansk region would just stop pumping groundwater on the 26th of October. So now the mines that are located in separatist controlled territory are basically done for. Other politicians have had more immediate concerns. Former Ukrainian president and current Minsk negotiator Leonid Kuchma has condemned the blockade, as has current Prime Minister Vladimir Groisman. Prime Minister Groisman's position is that the blockade is harming ordinary Ukrainians because of the lost supplies of coal. The coal remains a crucial aspect of Ukrainian power plants, who depend on a special type of coal that is produced in occupied Donbass. Groisman also emphasized that a more precarious energy position would make Ukraine more vulnerable to pressure from Russia. At a recent meeting with representatives of the steel and energy sectors, he called for an end to the blockade. Obmezhenia. Limiting the supply of coal for energy and the use in steel production will hit ordinary Ukrainians. In some cities, the Singlita lost of heat and electricity. Many other government officials have also agreed with Groisman. So, is it more important to cut off financial support to the illegal pro-Russian forces or maintain both coal production and ties with a territory that will eventually be recovered, hopefully as intact as possible? The former soldiers and volunteer fighters who are staging the blockade think the former. They believe that the government isn't doing enough and have stopped negotiating with that government for the time being, meaning that there's an uncertain future for the coal trade across the front lines.